Thank you, all of you. Please be seated so we can uh, continue this uh, afternoon session. David, Andre, you ready? Just to inform you all that uh, we will soon be back on streaming for the next presentation. As, uh, as we mentioned earlier, we will be streaming this afternoon session as well. The next, the next session will be uh, conducted by our president, Gregory Forporten, who will be uh, taking you through the proposal which the BWF Council has been, will be bringing forward to the uh, BWF annual general meeting on the 19th May in uh, Bangkok, Thailand, under the uh, headline Enhancing Badminton's Future. So, Gregory, will you come to stage and take us through the uh, presentation? So, thanks everyone for, uh, for getting out of the, the nice view over there in the sun. It always hurts me getting back into the room but know that it's for the greater good and uh, we're doing this for our sport. Uh, so thank you very much for uh, being that strong to sit in a room like this with a view like that outside. So, I um, want to take a bit of time this afternoon to talk you through uh, some of the proposed changes that you probably heard of over the last couple of months. Um, and want to put in perspective, and it's maybe good that I introduce from which perspective that I'm talking uh, about this today. So I'm going to talk about the perspective of uh, the BWF Council as being part of the Council and being the Vice President uh, for Europe in the Council. But I'm also going to be talking from a personal point of view and I'm going to share my personal point of view with you. Um, and obviously I'm happy to be challenged on the personal point of view. Um, but also happy for you to, to weigh in on the Council's proposal. Um, so I'm first going to start with taking you through why we got where we are. Going to try to give everybody as much insight as I can to the decision-making uh, process. Um, I'm happy to be stopped at any time, so please make this interactive, uh, challenge me, uh, ask questions about what Council is thinking. I can obviously disclose what, uh, what my personal view is. I sometimes uh, will probably not be able to answer on uh, some of the views of other people, but there are a couple of other people in the room as well that can help me and that have been part of the, the BWF discussion. So the, the backdrop of this proposal is not because we think it's going bad with badminton. I think badminton is doing great. If you look at badminton across other sports at the moment, uh, considering all of the, let's say, governance scandals in other sports, considering commercial revenue decreases in many sports, uh, considering the economic climate that has changed also the commercial revenue model uh, around sport, in general, badminton is doing really good compared to other sports. Um, and just a couple of general numbers, and these are numbers you can get out of the annual report of BWF, but as you see, and I've only taken uh, note as of 2012, because going even further back, if we go back to 2009, it would be almost unfair because our uh, revenue, especially the income, and then also, of course, the related expenses of BWF before 2012 were well below that $5 million point. 2012, as you know, being an Olympic year, uh, revenue income, was slightly higher than obviously years like 2013 and 2014, but you know how the, the revenue is accounted for within BWF, and you know that every four years there's a spike because of that Olympic income. But if you look at the income of BWF over the, the span of time 2012-2017, we basically got from excluding the Olympic revenue from 8.3 million, 8.4, to 23.6. And this is a span of five years. Now, you can say, is BWF income a good uh, picture of the state of badminton and the profile and the popularity of badminton? 
Maybe not necessarily, yeah, because it's only one organization taking care of the sport in general, but at least it gives you a bit of perspective what commercial value the sport has and what at least BWF has, to be, uh, has been able to um, make out of it. Now, obviously, once BWF is making more money, there's also more expenses, and those expenses are mainly put into the development of the sport, promotion of the sport, and if you look at the expenses going from 9.7 million in 2012 to 20, over 20 million in 2017, it means something is happening. So there is a lot of development activity, which partly also flows back to uh, us over here in Europe through some of the development money that comes from BWF. Now again, this is just the backdrop. So the backdrop is that the Federation is doing pretty well, financially doing pretty well. The profile of badminton is, is uh, rising. If you look at the uh, prize money of the players, for example, which is also an interesting metric, if we look back to 2009 and just taking Super Series uh, prize money, we were at about 3.4 million. 2017, we've more than doubled that for the players. Purely looking at Super Series again. So, whatever you would measure badminton against, if you look at popularity of the sport, and I've taken the liberty to include a couple of European members here, and feel free to comment if you feel differently. But these countries are countries where badminton is amongst the top five sports in the country by any measure. If you look at France, where badminton is a very strong school sport, it's maybe not yet the top five sport, and I will follow Florent on, on, uh, on that uh, if he has some comments on that. But France, popularity of the sport is growing, results in the sport are growing. If you look at Denmark, Denmark as a small country, it is a small country, small sports country is able to compete with the giants of Asia on a daily level. Daily basis, they can compete. Look at all of those other countries which are not necessarily small countries. Badminton is within the top three sports in Malaysia, China, recently only in, also in India, and I bet you that India beating Malaysia in the Commonwealth Games team finals last week is going to have a, a spike even more on the popularity of the sport in India. South Korea, Singapore, Indonesia. If you look at Europe, also in the UK, badminton is still a pretty popular sport if you look at the numbers. So just to put that backdrop there too, because if you look at these countries and these names, probably what we're doing within BWF is not yet enough. I think we haven't reached the limit yet. It's too easy to make progress in badminton because we came from very far and we still are making progress every year, adding commercial partners every year, and the popularity of badminton is increasing. So you may wonder, why does the BWF Council today come with changes in their scoring system and changes around the presentation of the game, if this is the backdrop? So if it ain't broke, why are we trying to fix it? Well, there is a strong belief within Council that we haven't gotten to the right answer yet in popularity of the game, fan experience, and experience of people outside badminton, of the game of badminton, and the presentation of our top players. We feel there's still a lot to do. And what I want to put in perspective for you too is that the scoring system is a smaller element of that. So maybe people will, hi, you will hear a BWF Council members speak about the package there's a package, there's a whole spectrum of measures that BWF Council has come up with where we strongly believe that that will impact the popularity of our game over time. And you'll see that the scoring system, it's an important one, but it's only one of those measures. So let's put that in perspective as well. One other perspective that we've taken very carefully into consideration, and you probably have been part of, of many of those discussions before, is the fact that the players of today are probably not going to be the supporters to change the game of tomorrow. The players of today, especially the ones that are making the results today, are probably the most comfortable in a position where nothing changes. But that's where I come back to what I said this morning. I think it's our duty as administrators, players may say from their ivory tower uh, in a board, to make an impact on our sport 
and make the sport ready for the future. And we heard quite a lot about that this morning already. I heard people talk about the attention span of uh, the youth these days. I heard people talk about the way that people take up content about the digital revolution. I heard people talk about esports. We hear people talk about if we are not excited and engaged, a sport will not matter for those who are not really into the sport. And what we want in the end is to bring a bit more emotion to the game so that more people get inspired, make badminton a product that is a bit more broadcastable, and we'll talk a bit, a bit about that later, and make it ready for the exposure that we feel it deserves in the future. So that's a bit the backdrop against which BWF is coming up with these proposals. So far, everybody with me? If there's questions, feel free to interrupt. So, looking at, at the game of badminton, from a position that if we stand still, we're actually going backwards. Let's think about how we can innovate the game without being too intrusive, without changing a product that clearly works in a way, because we are getting the results that we were aiming for year over year over the last couple of years, but we're not yet a top five sport worldwide across the board. And I think that's, in the end, the ambition that we feel we can rightfully have if you look at the global uh, spectrum and, and look at the global popularity of the sport and then especially taking Asia as a, as a cornerstone. So what we want to be doing is innovating the competition rules. We want to, in the end, enrich the fan experience. So fan experience is going to be key. We can talk about that a bit later as well. Raising the profile of our stars and our players. Increasing, in the end, the commercial value of the sport. Strength, strengthening the profile of badminton. And I think that's something we are still struggling with in Europe quite a lot. There are still a lot of people that don't know badminton. And the perception that the people that don't know badminton have about badminton and looking at Europe or looking at the US of A, where I'm uh, living these days, and, and maybe some of you saw the, the show that uh, Jimmy Fallon was basically getting a, a badminton team uh, of the USA ready to compete at the Olympics last time. It was really uh, jokingly uh, presenting the sport of, of badminton, although they had a world champion back in 2005, right? So the profile is still something we're really struggling with. And in the end, we want to enhance the broadcast product. Now, some of you may say this is nice for the top players, but whatever you're doing with the rules is also going to impact the players that are playing day to day in our clubs and it's going to impact the youngsters. And I think our duty is to take care of that top game, that top product. But also, part of our duty is to make sure that popularity of badminton increases worldwide and that we make the game flexible to suit the needs of any age and every player. I think one of the, the mantras of our president is still having a racket in every child's hand. And I think David is trying to accommodate that with his shuttle time program as well. So we're not forgetting about the rest of the players. We're saying let's focus on that top game to have the top game drive also the wider game uh, upwards and make it that flexible that, for example, if we play in the future uh, best of 5 to 11 system, that for young players we can translate that to a best of, uh, of 3 to 11, that we can uh, have other games that suit really the developmental needs of all of the players uh, and there may be players that even want to continue to play with the current system. So we're talking here about the top game and you'll see that also the proposal focuses on top level and only one junior tournament at the moment, which is the World Junior Championships. So that's what we try to achieve. And I think in, in front of you for the AGM in Bangkok are going to be three proposals. One being a proposal around an enhanced scoring system, and let's take some time to explore that and, and have a discussion on that. Another one around reduced on-court coaching. And again, that needs to be seen in a wider um, spectrum of measures, which I'm going to talk to you about, but do not necessarily impact the rules of the game. And so, for example, there are also some measures around, you know, we, technical officials will not allow players to test new rackets uh, when they take them out of their bag, which now sometimes I, 
it happens regularly all the time. A badminton player takes a new racket, they hit two, three strokes, and then they continue the game. So there's a wider amount of measures that are going to reduce the downtime in play, and we'll talk a little bit about that later on as well, which you don't necessarily need to vote upon because they're not part of the rules as such, but they're part of how we educate our technical officials to deal with the game. And then there's the experimental service law with a fixed height. And I know that's been a pretty controversial one over the last couple of months because we have been testing that actively. Um, and I think some good feedback came out of that testing that we really need to take into consideration uh, as to how we can potentially make that a better rule. So those are the three things that are going to be in front of you at the BWF AGM. Um, let's explore them a bit more in detail. So. Let's talk first about that enhanced scoring system. And if you look at some of the statistics, I can assure you we have had done a lot of statistical research around this. I can also tell you that I do not think we have tested this at the best, in the best way possible. So in my opinion, if you really are serious about a change in the rule, we should have tested it at the very highest level. And we haven't necessarily done that. And I think that's one of the things that we could have done better doesn't take away that I believe personally and also as a VP uh, of uh, Europe in BWF that the changes are going to make an impact on the game. So if you look at some of the statistics since 2008 to 2016 when it comes to match length, you see that there's an increase of 29% in match length in quarterfinals, 22% in semifinals and 16% in finals. So matches are getting longer. And obviously we looked at what the reasons are behind matches getting longer and have tried to resolve some of the reasons why that is the case. We'll talk about it soon as well. Although the matches have gotten longer, if you look at the play time, so the time that the shuttle is effectively in the air, it decreased significantly, almost 50%. Must be some reasons, and I, I, we can surely all blame Sven and his uh, group of technical officials, but probably he's not going to solve that alone. So, we'll, uh... so I told you we've done a lot of statistical research, and, and this may bore you a little bit, but there's quite a lot of information that we try to put into the annual report um, that you have already received from BWF, and, and this is just a fraction of that. Um, and I'm going to present a couple, not, not going to go through all of them, but. It's very important, I think it's very important to understand that based on the statistical analysis and the testing that we have done, that the probability of changing the winner of a game by changing the scoring system the way that we're proposing to change it is going to be identical. So what does that mean? The player that wins the match today is very likely to win the match tomorrow. So we're not by changing the rules, impacting who's winning the game. And this is an argument that I hear a lot coming from Asian corners. And again, a fair argument coming uh, from Asia, but they say that Europe, because obviously Polaric is European, president coming from Denmark, that the Europeans are trying to change the rules to win more matches. We firmly believe that's not true. And the statistical analysis teaches us that that is likely very untrue. In the trial system, which is a new system at the 5 to 11, the game winning probabilities are fairly high for weaker players, even outside the range where match outcomes are almost certain. What does that mean? That actually means that the likelihood that the player that loses wins one game in the end is getting higher. So not that they are winning the match, but that there is the likelihood that they will win one game is getting significantly higher, which means in the end that the game should become a little bit more exciting because somebody can go come back into the game, they can win a game, not necessarily a match, and hopefully that will also result in the fact that your players, when they play some of the top players in the world, can sometimes come out with the result of having won a game which I think is important because that's going to help your messaging around the result of your players. And in the end, if we really want to make an impact on the popularity of the sport, if you look at all of those countries where badminton is popular, there's one constant in those countries. 
they have champions. India, badminton is popular because of Saina, because of Sindhu, because of the new uh, men's singles player that I always forget his name of. So that's why badminton is becoming more popular in India. Badminton is popular in China because they can win. Yes, they have a lot of players playing badminton, but they win. It's popular in Malaysia because there's winners. Same in Indonesia. Why is it becoming more popular in, I think, yeah, why is it becoming more popular in, for example, Spain? It's becoming more popular in Spain because there are people like Carolina in Spain who can become world champion. So in the end, I think the fact that your players can make better results on court, although maybe not winning, hopefully will help the popularity of the game worldwide. But at least what it will do is deliver a bit more exciting matches. The length of the match is shorter under the trial system. So you saw that we really had uh, yeah, an increasingly, um, a, a problem that was getting bigger and bigger when it came to the length of matches. And the system, at least the statistics and the testing results that we have, delivered the result that the matches are getting shorter, not substantially shorter, because one of the counter arguments that I also hear is that, yeah, by these uh, new rules, you're taking the physical element out of the game. I don't think that's necessarily true. First of all, we're going to decrease the downtime, uh, which means that 50% that the shuttle is less in play than before, we're going to decrease that, which is going to have an impact on your physical ability and the matches are not going to get that much shorter that you're going to compensate for that. So for me, the physical element is going to be still very prevalent, if not more prevalent, if we push through the measures around reducing downtime. Down, downtime. In the current system, so the system of today, and again, you can go through all of those statistics that are in the annual report, and there's more numbers behind that, and if anybody wants them, we can get them to you. But in the current system, when the first player reaches 11 points, he will have more than 75% chance of winning the game. And that's even true with players of equal strengths. So that basically means once it is 11, it's actually for 75% known who's going to win the match. Why do you want to watch the other 10 points? If you're an experienced badminton viewer, and I, I tend to say that I, I was at least when I watched a lot of uh, badminton, I would never sit down behind the match when it was love all, or when it was 2-2, or even when it was 8-2. I would probably go and sit down behind the match or focus my attention to one of the matches that is playing in the tournament when the score became like 15-16. When it was 17-17, that is interesting. Watching a match that is 10-8 is actually building up to the suspense which is coming when it is 17-17. That's true for me, it may not be true for you. I think a true badminton lover will probably be more interested in the build-up than somebody who's not a true badminton lover. A true badminton lover will know that it's part of the game, that there's tactical elements there, that players are wearing each other out, and you know, you have all of the insights. But if we want to create a game that the fans can understand, yeah, they, they will not start watching it too well. They will still be at the bar, waiting until it's 11-12 and then coming in. And yeah, if it never becomes 11-12 because somebody is 9-2 ahead, yeah, they probably don't bother at all. So it's again with that mindset that some of the changes have been proposed. So I think number six, and, and it's there again actually in a different wording, and this is coming directly out of the BWF material, but under the proposed system, it's quite likely for the losing player to win a game, even if he eventually doesn't uh, win the match. I think it's a good argument for us. Can we have a, a, a mic going around the room? Because I think for the live streaming, it's important to uh, make sure that everybody can understand you. Hello. Uh, I'm just asking uh, regarding the statistics, uh, the matches are getting longer. Is there a difference between the five categories regarding that? I know there's been research amongst the five categories. Now, I cannot give you the answer necessarily, but I'll look into the answer for you. Um, I think that overall, the length of matches is increasing in all of the five categories, but I don't know to what extent it's increasing more, let's say, in, in a singles match, a men's singles match uh, against a, a women's doubles match. So uh, I have to 
get you the answer later, but there is an answer. Yeah. Any other questions at this stage? Reina? Yes, I have a question about the testing period. It, uh, it conclu uh, had two vital elements. One was the length of matches, and the other one, each tournament that tested the system, scoring system, had to conduct a survey, which included players, viewers, uh, technical officials. I have, so far as I've heard of the new proposal, the changes for the BWF Council, I, I, maybe it's just my, me, but I haven't seen the survey results. What was the feedback among different stakeholders? Because th this is quite important, because all the profitable outcomes we want to see, they might happen, they might not happen, but uh, the feedback we have, this is what we want, if we want those people to stay engaged and to win new ones. No, I think that's a very fair question, and, and they're not there. Um, I'll talk to you a little bit about what I understood and, and from those survey results, um, but we can also get those to you later on. So we uh, not only surveyed players, uh, fans, uh, coaches, uh, also tournament organizers, technical officials, but we also surveyed, for example, uh, commercial partners and that were broadcasters, sponsors. Uh, so there's a, there's a big set of, of survey results there. I was a bit disappointed with the, the volume to, it, uh, to the extent that we did the survey, so we probably could have done a better job in that. But based on the survey results, the feedback was very mixed. It was mixed at the level of players. There were players that were clearly for, uh, but there were maybe even more players that were against. There were commercial partners that were very much in favor. Uh, broadcasters were generally in favor. We were actually quite surprised. If you look at, for example, uh, CCTV, which is a very important stakeholder for Badminton Worldwide, and a Chinese uh, broadcaster, they were very much in favor. Um, we've also looked at our uh, commercial partners, so the ones that we are basically uh, delivering the rights to. Also there, not, nobody really against, but a little bit of a reservation, because obviously people know what they know, they don't know uh, what they don't. Um, so that's what I remember being the survey results, being quite mixed, which actually didn't give us quite a good steer. So we started this discussion back in, oh, I think it was in, in India a couple of years ago. I don't exactly know the year. But we started the discussion there and we said the survey will give us a steer as to where to go. And in the end, I think all in all, and, and my fellow BWF council members can weigh in here as well, it didn't really give us the steer that we wanted. So it didn't really push us into one direction not to do it or really push us in another direction to do it. So that's where we also said it's up to us to take responsibility here and basically look at statistical analysis, which we've tried to do. And also that is obviously only one version of the truth, uh, but also come up with what we really believe in and take a position. So we, we can get you surely some results, um, but overall you will see that if you look at those results, it's very mixed. Uh, Ro Ronnie Conway, Chair of Badminton Scotland, and I was Chair at the time of the World Championships last year. Many of you will remember the Titanic women's single final between Sindhu and Azomi, 150 minutes. Now, for the Badminton purist, that was a classic. For the people sitting around me who were the stakeholders who were effectively funding much of the Badminton Championships, for me, it, it, it was a disaster because you have a lot of people, this is their only single exposure to the sport, they spent two and a half hours watching a match. So when you say it's not broke, we don't need to fix it, it is broke, it is broke. And can I also say, you're talking about reducing downtime. I'm not going to name names, but everyone who watched that game knows that there was disgraceful time wasting. If you want this um, game to get the showbiz level that it deserves, we've got to address this. Yeah, thanks, Ronnie. Sweden in the corner over there. Jimmy? Yeah. You're running fast. <laughs> Uh, for Sweden and uh, for my own personality, I think this number one, two, three should be pressed. Number one and number two is 
one question and number three is another question. Because we have uh, this morning, uh, how about uh, the future, 2023? If, if we want to be in the top interest of sports, I, can, I usually call it show business, then we have to give the spectators what they want. Quicker, quicker to come to the end of a game. Exciting, excitement to go quicker. That's, youngsters want that, they don't. Take, as, as you mentioned about that uh, final, uh, it doesn't attract people. About the service law, I think that has to be more to, to look after. So you don't have this starting a new thing uh, that is not so uh, good for the sport. But for the TV and for everything, for the interest of badminton, I think that counting system is very good. Thank you. So let's maybe continue a bit and continue your thoughts as well and, and feel free again to, to weigh in. So in the end it's about this, right? Upgrading the presentation of Elite Badminton and I understand it's small. All of these materials are available on the BWF website too and we'll get them in this presentation to you later on as well, obviously. Want to enrich the fan experience, increase commercial value of our sport, enhance the quality of our broadcast product, strengthen our profile as a cutting-edge sport, be innovative on our competition rules, and then raise the profile of all of our stars and emerging talent. And you'll see that there's quite a lot under each of those boxes. So also when we discussed this at uh, council level, actually all of those boxes were then built out with another kind of honey uh, bee uh, thing. Uh, I don't know how you say that in English. Um, that everything underneath, again, weighs in on trying to get uh, the right effect. And one of the main things, and that came also back from the Athletes Commission, uh, they were pretty vocal on that point, is that we really have to have better management of the field of play. And better management of the field of play, again, you can uh, say technical officials should take care of that, but technical officials should get the right framework in order to then, in the end, deliver on the wanted result. But some of the measures that will be taken and that are not necessarily there for you to vote upon because there's no such thing in the rules of badminton around it, but we will be limiting the time that players have to start serving. And there's quite a lot of ideas around that and ideas are, uh, were ranging from you know, giving uh, a stopwatch to the umpires to having a shot clock kind of uh, something like you have in, in basketball, right, behind the court, that uh, if you haven't shot to the basketball ring within 24 seconds, or if you haven't started serving within 24 seconds, you would lose a point. So again, there's a lot of thoughts around that. I'm telling you it will not go to the shot clock tomorrow, but at least there's a spectrum of measures that will be put in place pretty quickly. Reduce warm-up time. Obviously, it goes hand-in-hand hand with allowing the players to warm up outside uh, the official court uh, in good conditions. So uh, we don't forget that players need the warm-up and, and need to be able to hit uh, on the courts. Quicker instant reviews. You probably experienced also when you watched badminton that sometimes it takes a bit of time to get those instant reviews um, popped up. And again, I would have asked Peter probably to explain how they were going to achieve that, but he's not here yet, so let's ask him later when he arrives. Uh, but there are measures around that as well. It's very interesting as a BWF council member that mopping made it to our table, but it did. So uh, there's going to be also some measures around how we can better mop and quicker mop the court. Quicker shuttle change, no testing of replacement rackets. Um, all of those things actually will hopefully get to um, yeah, uh, an experience that we have less downtime uh, like we saw was one of the, the issues we had in the beginning. Now also around coaching, I'll maybe take that here as well. Um, there's been a long discussion that we had with both the Athletes Commission but also around the, the council table uh, on the impact of coaching and also the presentation that we want to have around coaching uh, within the badminton sport. And obviously a coach is a very helpful individual for a top player and some top players will be used to coaches more and will be attached to coaches more than others. But in the end, we also feel that a top player should be in the center of attention during the game. And we probably need to move the coaches a bit more back. We also want to give the players the chance to ask 
when they want to be coached and not being influenced from behind the court all the time. So you'll see that in the proposal, there is a proposal around coaching that basically allows each player to call a timeout. A timeout of about two minutes. You'll say, oh, that timeout is pretty long. It's actually longer than what they sometimes have today. There's also a reason for that because we want to basically move the coaches back from the field of play. Now the coaches are pretty close to the field of play, also in the camera vision most of the time, and we actually want to uh, make sure that we can move coaches a bit more back. Again, this is at the top level. This is top level players where we want to make sure that the top level players can really deliver the result on court without being pushed uh, either way by their coach, but still allowing them to be coached when they want to be coached and when they call the timeout. And you'll see that in the proposed regulations, there's also another chance to call a timeout if you ever get to a fifth set. So basically one chance a player before and then uh, a chance a player again uh, when it comes into the, the fifth set of the game. Hopefully also increasing the suspense a bit at that time, bringing that extra element of coaching in there. So all of that, to face the challenges of matches that are becoming longer, breaks that are becoming longer between points, and uh, also a greater physical and mental stress on players resulting to more injuries. So this is the proposal on the scoring system. This is what we finally came up with because there were a couple of suggestions. And if I need to tell you why in the end we came with this one, rather than with some of the other that were proposed. Statistics didn't really drive us again one way or the other. So we needed to make a call. And the people around the table felt that this is probably the best way to go. We want to keep setting into the game because if you want to increase the amount of peaks in a match, you don't want to take away setting. You could say sudden death is a great thing. 10-10, you play until 11, no setting, a lot of suspense but that suspense is lasting one point. If you wanted to increase the tight 10-10, 11-11, 12-12 situations, we felt there needed to be a level of setting in there. So we basically kept the current setting system, which is a, a setting system where you have to basically get two points difference, um, and that you can choose as of 10-10, and we play in the end the best of five to 11, but the setting being kept at 15 and being kept deliberately at 15 to avoid that we again end into a scenario like Ronnie uh, explained where matches are lasting two hours and a half. And for those who watch squash, that's one sometimes what I saw happen in uh, suspensive, uh, suspense matches in squash where they basically don't have a cap on the setting, uh, at least not how I understand it, and matches go on pretty long. So one timeout per player for coaching, unless you get to a fifth game and then you get one more chance uh, for a timeout, and you don't change sides in between games. Uh, yeah, in between games, yes, but not during the game. You only change sides if you get to a fifth set at six. So that's the proposed scoring system. I near today, Israel. I would like to address the, the coaching uh, thing. I think that the uh, coaches in other sports, in show business, they are part of the game. And in badminton, they are not. And if I watch the NBA basketball, the coach has to come to a two questions interview in the first quarter instead of going and coaching his team. And I think this makes a big difference that the crowd and the spectators can be more involved in the, in the game. So if we're talking about show business, I think uh, we should invade the, the, the court and around the court in a live uh, situations more and more and not uh, leave it like players are playing there, spectators are there, and in the big sports, there is a big connection between those things already. You can see it on TV every day because we watch only football and basketball. <laughs> yeah, and, and I think we, we thought about that, near, and we discussed that quite long. And if you look at the examples of sports where coaches are prevalent, you'll identify them as team sports. 
basketball, football, ice hockey, American football. I, okay, I come from an American environment the last 10 years. But coaches are important there because they also need to keep the team together. They can represent the team in interviews later on. Where in badminton we felt, yeah, let's look at some of the key individual sports. If you look at golf, if you look at tennis, which are pretty popular individual sports, the role of the coach is pretty small. Yeah, sometimes you have yeah, this ex-top player that is coaching uh, a certain tennis player and that gets a little bit of television time sitting in a box. And I think we can cater for that in badminton as well. But we want the player to be conducting the interview, there to be an experience of the fans getting more engaged into uh, the, the player's life rather than making the coach a bit more prevalent. And it's a choice we in the end also wanted to make to be able to do more things around the court than just putting the coaches where they now are. And there are a couple of reasons why we uh, basically want to clear that part of where the coaches are in the field of play. But also in the end, uh, language is limiting what we can do with coaches in some of the top matches today. Uh, as well, yeah, because if you have an Indonesian coach talking to Indonesian players, yeah, it's nice to put a, a microphone on top of that and uh, hear him talk, and probably in Indonesia they can understand. But also uh, around the world it's, uh, it's, it's a bit more difficult. So we thought about it, and I, I take your point, because you can go either way. In the end we decided to go the way of making the player more prevalent rather than the coach, but there's something to be said for, uh, for any position. Does that make sense? Yeah, and, and you'll see, and, and I very much admire what, what happened uh, at, uh, at All England recently, where they really, you know, very crisp asked the players to, to come in and sometimes even brought a translator along because we really want to give a bit more exposure to those players. And I, in my opinion, also, everything that we're doing around our digital strategy and creating apps and creating a fan experience should be around making that player more prevalent, getting more personal stories around the players, hone in on, on uh, injuries that players have. There are top players. I, I got an injury report uh, this morning that we basically needed to approve uh, because I'm, I'm part of the, the committee that then has to say a top player that's uh, within the top 15 if he doesn't show up at a tournament to uh, take care of his rep representation duties, then we typically impose a fine. Uh, that's the way it works at, uh, at the highest level of our game. And we get those injury report of players and I'm always thinking, you know, it would be very interesting if, if the crowd the general crowd would know about those injuries and how the revalidation of the player is going and that you really get a little bit more engaged on, on these kind of matters as well. And again, it's all in the thinking of, you know, how can we make that player more prevalent? But again, personal point of view, um, but also then a view that, uh, that council wanted to follow around coaching. So let's move on a little bit through the presentation. So again, top level at the moment, and World Junior Championships. So there's flexibility. You'll also see that there's alternative service, uh, alternative scoring systems built into the rules of badminton. You'll see that as part of the proposal, which were there before as well. So in the end, that's the three proposals. That's what's out there for you. If I need to put a bit of personal opinion on this, I think number one is absolutely critical. I truly believe if we want to have a future as a sport, we need to fix a problem. I believe there is a problem. I'm a bit more uh, thinking like, uh, like Ronnie. Um, I think there is a problem. If you look at commercial revenue, if you look at the great matches, because some of the people will take that uh, lady single match as an example of why not to change. Because it is inspiring, it was an uh, admirable battle, it was really going to the end uh, of the boat player's ability, a lot of emotion, yes, for somebody who understands the game, probably true, but for that match, and maybe even for somebody who doesn't understand the game, but for that match, there are 20 other matches that basically last too long for the excitement that they deliver, right? So for me, that is absolutely key. Now I'm gonna go even further. I believe that if we do not, in this room, in Badminton Europe, and its members do not believe that we need to change that and not support this change, I can pretty much assure you we will not change. And we will not get another chance to change until more than 10 years from now. So for me, this is a really critical moment 
in badminton. You're going to have a lot of frustrations of your players at home. Because players, in my opinion, they don't want to change. They know how it works, they've been playing like that for years, and we had a couple of other systems before and they never worked, and then we got to this 21 system, and okay, we're now used to it, let's continue to play like that. We may not have liked it then, because they also didn't like the change back then, but they like it now. Trust me, if we make this change today, and we'll talk with those players in five years, they will like it. But if you ask a top player today, a player who is trained in a certain system, day after day after day to be as good as they are and are producing results, if you ask that player, do you want to change, that player will tell you, no, I know what I have and I'm winning with what I have. I don't want to change. I would absolutely understand that a Victor Axelson doesn't want to change the scoring system. Why would he? He's world champion under this scoring system. He knows what he has and doesn't necessarily know how it's going to develop if something changes. I also understand that around the service law, there are some frustrations. I, and there I'm going to be putting again another personal opinion out there, I don't think we have that right yet. And maybe that's something we need to take back and refine. But I also believe we need to have a certain rule where people can adhere to. And now, the rule that we have now is too ambiguous as well. So I'm not necessarily saying that what we come up with today is worse than what we had in the future. I still think we don't have it right, and I still think technology needs to play a, mo a better role in that. But I'm also certain, and I know, that we're looking for better solutions as a measuring device. We're looking at more technological advanced solutions than that stupid plastic thing that we now have for umpires need to go look through and then change it from side to side. I know it's not ideal. So, again, personal view. Number one, absolutely critical. I think absolutely critical that we support with as much people as possible. I think it's going to change the game for the better. It's not going to impact who wins, but it's going to fix some of the problems around the game and it's going to increase the excitement. And I think that's what we need. Reduced on-court coaching, I think in the spirit of making the player more prevalent, it's important. Players' presentation, it's important. Having the coach not always having to come back on the court and reducing the downtime is important. So I think the measure is a good measure. Can be refined later, should it be two minutes, should it be one and a half minutes, should we have two timeouts rather than one timeout? Yeah, and, but those are pretty easy fixes. But I think the principle of calling a timeout is also adding to the excitement of the game because in the end it's a player's initiative to call a timeout at a time that he feels that it needs to be called. Now I can tell you there were much more proposals on the table than the ones that we got through. We had very exciting discussions around a golden shuttle, I think a little bit similar to what uh, was presented in the National Badminton League in, in England as being a shuttle that once you picked it up you could score two points with. Some people liked that around the table but we were in the minority so in the end we let that go. But just to tell you that what we have here it's not a compromise, but it's a package of measures which we truly believe in. And we, there were more daring measures out there that in the end we decided not to put at the table just yet. But there's more to come. Any questions? Any thoughts? Do you think we have it absolutely wrong? Please tell me. Um, if you feel something for it, please tell me as well. Adrian? Um, just just a, a comment, really, a couple of comments. Um, on the fixed height, on the service rule, one, one of the things I'm quite intrigued about, Gregory, is if the members vote n or, or, vote, or don't vote in favour of the change, will we, how are you going to manage the fact that some of the season's been played with an experimental system and some hasn't? So I, I am assuming you'll immediately revert back to the current or the previous system, is that correct? Peter, can you maybe answer that one? I've got another question. And I'm, I'm very happy that Peter arrived just in time to help me with these tricky questions. Good afternoon, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, as you all know, uh, we started the experiment uh, with the uh, German Open, so from the 1st March uh, this year. 
so far three tournaments tested this uh, and uh, the proposal from the council from the council is that uh, the AGM will delegate the council to make the final decision till the end of the year so we well, we want to continue to, to test the service height if it it goes very wrongly so maybe we stop it in september if it goes okay as it so as it is so far we will continue till the end of the game so we will seek the kind of a delegation from the membership to the council i, I don't think there will be voting on that the, we, we will we will ask the members there will be no question because the, we will not vote on that if you are supporting it or not because uh, we had no time to test it so we will ask you to allow us to test more and make a decision by council then yeah so if people not allow us to test more there's not going to be more testing yes something like that yeah but it, it, there will be no question, yes or no, because we yeah. can't provide data. I mean, it, it, it was a very short period. Just, uh, just one more observation. Um, no, nothing really to do with these, but uh, we've talked a lot today about, about on-court presentation and what people looking through a TV looks, looks at. Can I just ask one plea, and if you're doing this already, then forgive me if I've, if I've missed it. Can we please stop the behavior where the player has to move their box their bag around the service around the umpire and just leave the bags where it looks so messy and it's I, I think it's incredibly unprofessional if you want to enhance our appearance just leave the bag where they are the players can are perfectly able to walk around the umpire chair yeah i think that's a point well taken and it's being worked on so we will avoid having to move bags across umpires yes yeah. Rene? Yes. From Denmark, we can say we have to change the scoring system. But we also have to think a little over. It's only to keeping our sport attractive for the television. All other players and the international players, we have to change it. But for the players on the lower level, what are we doing there? And there we have each country to make something what is uh, good for each country to have. Because when we are changing after 11 points in a beginner's uh, level, they can change uh, uh, half of the court uh, each second minute. So, but on the international uh, level, we have to change the scoring system, and we will uh, see after five, six, se 2023. We we will see they have the players have learned to play with that system. For that's what happened after 2006. We were doing that because of we we wanted to have shorter matches. And we got that for a year or two. And then the players, who are very good players, they learned to play with that system. And they will do the same here, believe me. They are very clever, the players. We can uh, thumbs up for that su suggestion. Maybe not so much on the two next. Can we make a little uh, between us say, when, if we are supporting number one, we have to have uh, something change <laughs> on the other two. We will say the service law, for us, it's an awful law. Because the other things, scoring system, on-court coaching, that's the same for each players. But there we have a law who is making something really difficult for our two meters players. And that's not okay in, in our opinion. If we are going to change something uh, on um, the second, with coaching, um, 
I think they are, uh, they are wanting to do that because of we have to uh, have some times cut off uh, the game. But I have to say, why are we not doing that with that rules we have now? It's only because of the umpires who is not running the match after the rules. They have the rules to get it go faster, but they do not do it. Why? I don't know. Maybe the referees are not telling them enough strangely. You have to go and do so and so and so because we have, uh, we have to uh, have some times cut off uh, the games. But um, we are quite positive of the first and then we have to discuss something after the number two and number three. Yeah. Thanks, Thank you. Renee. Thanks, Rene. And I think that possibility is there, right? There's a reason why we're not presenting this as take it or leave it with all three. We're actually presenting these as individual points to be voted upon. So you can take one and not like the others. There's that option. Um, but I also would then yeah, hope that we are all thinking together as to how we can, because there is also a problem that needs to be fixed around the service. How can we get there? And there are initiatives going on within BWF that are looking into that, but feel free to also uh, weigh in on that because in the end we also want uh, a solution which may not be the ones that we the one that we have today anybody else peter would like to give you some more information about the service height uh, I think we can all agree that this is one of our one of the problems we have in our sport. It's been uh, actually discussed already in 2009 and during the World Championships 2010 in Paris there had been some testing done not uh, not during the tournament but out of the outside the tournament. Uh, no, no action has been done after 2010 and again member associations uh, are telling us do something, do something because it was a disaster in the Thomas and Uber Cup final uh, in uh, India I think and there was a disaster there and there was a disaster there, do something. So BWF Council decided uh, uh, two years ago we tried to call kind of a working group for the service uh, law and uh, in May 2016 in Kunshan during Thomas and Uber Cup we had a meeting with uh, quite a good number of uh, uh, team managers, uh, coaches, uh, referees, empires and players representatives. Uh, let's say the big countries been represented, yeah, China, Indonesia, Japan, Korea, uh, Denmark, uh, England, and uh, of course it was discussed and everybody agreed and the outcome of that meeting was let's try fix height that was a unanimous decision of this working group and we also asked the top nations to test it at home and they did i think six or seven countries have done this and i think also england and denmark also japan also china also indonesia also korea and they came back to bwf with uh, uh, re results of the testing and nobody of them said it's not good. There have been differences. China was proposing not 115 but 118 and a half. Somebody proposed 120, somebody proposed 115. So the decision of the council was, actually not, not the decision of the council was, the Bermital Association of Malaysia uh, put it to the agenda of the annu uh, annual general meeting and many of you have been in uh, Gold Coast last year when that was agreed and approved at the, at the meeting of the Badminton World Federation that we are going to test a fixed height. So that's the result also of the decision of the membership in uh, Gold Coast. So that's why the decision was made, let's try, let's try 115. Certain tool was uh, established or found, nobody saying that that will be for forever or this is the, the best one. Of course we are also testing, we are also discussing uh, uh, 
how you say, Gregory mentioned uh, 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 technology, kind of a technology that we can do. Laser. Yeah, something, something like that. But of course, we have to, to think about all the courts, all the tournaments, which is very costly, like the uh, Hokai system, yeah. instant review system. So we are in the moment, at the moment we are in a process, as I mentioned, we are testing. There had been a lot of discussion and rumors, and especially from some players on the social media before. We also been not sure what will happen at the German Open, what will happen in all England, and nothing has happened. There have been few faults called at the German Open, and uh, I mean, something has happened, but it was not a huge problem, or it was not a huge discussion. Uh, service judges are happy so far after three tournaments I'm saying so let's test it let's discuss it and let's see what we do at the end of the year thanks Adrian just just following on from what Peter just said I think um, and I, I can understand Renee's concerns on on, on a couple of these things I, I, I think I, I'd just like to congratulate the BWF actually because I think you're trying to do the right thing, or the BWF are trying to do the right thing, they're trying to improve the game. These may not be the solutions that do that, but until you test them, until you put them in front of the membership, until you put them in front of the players, you're never going to get to the, the, the optimum solution. So I think, I think BWF should be congratulated on trying to enhance the game. Thanks, Eddie. Any other questions, comments? Derek? <laughs> the suggestion is I should walk to the front, but I shan't. <laughs> I think one thing that came back from the technical officials at the All England was that because they were concentrating so much on the service height, they weren't watching the feet of the players. Uh, because you're concentrating on, on just th that level, looking through that little screen. So until the technology improves, uh, you do risk the players moving their feet at the same time. So it just needs an improvement in the technology, really. But you are taking the attention of the, of the service judge away from the whole player and just looking at the service height. Yeah. Then uh, one of the other things that I heard is, is the angle at which you can yeah. serve, that, that there's an impact. So I think we already get some, some good feedback from the testing through, which is, uh, which, which is obviously why we're doing the, the testing. So anybody else? Radomir? Yes, Radomir from Serbia. How these changes will reflect to para badminton regulations? I mean, do, do you have any information, any thoughts? Yeah, so you, you'll see that the para badminton regulations, for example, on the service are also in the in a proposal uh, in the uh, in the order papers for the the AGM. So you'll you'll see how it impacts. But obviously, the scoring system is something that now for us is only important to have changed at the top level and uh, junior uh, world championships. So um, I, I don't know exactly the answer to your question, but I know we looked upon the effects on para badminton and also Paul has made sure that the para badminton uh, world has been taken into consideration in the proposal. Now, I don't know the details, there may be more uh, in the paperwork, uh, but you'll find the answers there for sure. We ran out of battery. All the way to Latvia. <laughs> Thank you, Jimmy. So uh, I'm happy that uh, uh, you are also uh, uh, ask uh, or uh, about this uh, scoring system, because we are, I, I, it's my personal viewpoint. It's, we are not voting in Latvia about this, but uh, we also have experiment uh, with several matches. And uh, my, my viewpoint is that maybe it's not only because it's shorter, because short, it, as you said before, it's not always shorter. The, uh, for, for us, main focus was we also, so we, we, uh, we broadcast several matches in TV, also with 11 uh, uh, point system. And uh, as you said before, uh, the uh, main uh, uh, focus for spectators are in the uh, games uh, when the point is 70, 70 or 50, 70 or something like that. And uh, the start of the match uh, is without uh, focusing from fans. And uh, when with the match is more uh, with 11-point score, 
then uh, all uh, matches is more dynamic and it's more oriented for fans because uh, you are uh, uh, you show this presentation with start with the uh, figures from uh, b from budgeting there's a lot of uh, increasing uh, figures but the, i think the uh, main figure for us is a very important figure is the fans at, uh, fans and fan based activities and i think the fans are not more and more f during the last four years it's uh, the figure of fans is still a very very small one and uh, I, I think that if matches will be for a score of one, 11 point, then uh, fans will be more, at, uh, it will be more attractive for fans. First and second is a question of what popularity from uh, also players or not uh, maybe high uh, level play players, but uh, medium players. Then the, when we start to promote badminton, for example, in schools, we said that it's very, very easy to learn, it's easy to, uh, to start, etc., etc. When we start to show the games like uh, 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 this uh, uh, legendary game of uh, world championship uh, women's single, then the parents and the coaches understand it's, it's, too, it's too dangerous in the perspective from dopings, etc., because it's too physical. Uh, then it's not easy to invite several, uh, so many people to, in, uh, to, to, in, uh, to badminton in. And it's a second question. It's, I think it's, uh, 11 point scoring system is very, very. Uh, good for uh, promotion of badminton for new players and uh, for fans especially. Yeah, I, I must say I couldn't agree more. Fans, that's where we're doing this for. I, uh, we had a good discussion on the digital and I heard in some rooms ideas about you know how can we generate revenue with it. For me that's secondary. For me the most important thing is how can we get better access to our fans. The rest will follow. The popularity of the game is in the end measured in the eye of of the fans, so fully agree. And I think these, these are not there for uh, no reason. This is actually a slide we thought about pretty well. It is about more peaks. It's about getting to the peaks faster. It's about extending the length of the peaks, continuing to keep it easy to understand, and I think it's already pretty easy to understand. Moments of increased focus, not only for the fan, but also for the players. And for me, again, personal point of view, reduce the length of the matches was not the first driver for the change. Now, there's been a lot of focus of our events department on reducing the length of the matches as well because it was a problem. And, and like Ronnie uh, said um, uh, rightfully, it is a problem we needed to fix. But the main drivers were actually those five and then a good positive effect also on a problem that we had, which was the length of the matches. So I think you're, you're spot on in, in the analysis and. Uh, in my opinion, that's that's what we need to strive for. Any other questions or comments? If not, I'd like to thank you very much for the input on this discussion. I think it was a very lively discussion um, and, and really good feedback from the members. I'm not going to advocate this tomorrow at our annual delegate meeting, but I'm going to advocate it one more time to you here. If we feel that we can support this scoring system, I think as a continent we have the duty to go for it and lobby for this as much as we can. I don't think we will get another chance. We are putting our head out there and it's about to be either chopped off on the scoring system or people are supporting it. That's how I feel about this momentum and that's also why I'm taking a liberty that I actually shouldn't take as your president to really make some propaganda for what I feel is the right thing for the sport and what I know a lot of BWF council members feel, and I can tell you the vote on this was unanimous when we took the vote in uh, Jamaica. Everybody is behind this at BWF level um, in the council. Uh, a lot of people, and I cannot speak for everyone at Badminton Europe level because I haven't asked the question to everyone individually, but I know that a large majority uh, is really behind this as well. Our president, Paul Eric, this is one of his key things that he wanted to get through as soon as he became president in 2013. It has taken a while. Uh, he had to convince his council as well. Um, but in the end, this is the momentum to make it happen. And I really do not think, and this is for the Asian fans out there, I really do not think that this is a bad thing for Asia. I think this is a really good thing for Asia as well as for Europe. And I also really feel that the results in the end will not be impacted, the nature of the game will not be impacted, but we will be hopefully more exciting, we will get to the peaks faster, we will engage the fans better, we will get increased focus of our players, So, and that's 
uh, what this is all about. So thank you very much uh, for being here. I hope you will support this proposal. And I'm less married, personally, to number two and number three than I am to number one. So uh, feel free to take any direction you want on the others, but you've heard the argument why uh, these are put forward as well. So thanks. We are changing the program slightly. I think Jimmy will talk to you a little bit about that uh, for the rest of the, the time, because we felt this is a, a discussion we need to really engage in uh, and uh, exhaust uh, until uh, people had no further questions or comments. So I've, I've done that, uh, and I hope uh, that's appreciated, but it has an impact on our, our program, and I know that uh, Adrian had prepared a very good presentation for you on digital. Uh, we'll see whether we can still fit it in somewhere, but uh, if not, definitely talk to Adrian about it because they have some really good experience on the digital front uh, that he's uh, willing to share. So, Jimmy, over to you. Now, there's been some... Uh Extremely good discussions, not only at this sessions, but uh, throughout the whole day. Uh, we've been speaking internally and uh, really came to the conclusion that you have been extremely engaged, extremely active today. So we're actually not going to keep you any longer uh, for the time being. We have a boat to catch. And first, we have a bus to catch. So uh, we actually want to end this uh, member forum by thanking you all for your participation today. The last thing that we again would like to stress is uh, for you to fill out the evaluation form. Uh, take it with you or do it now. You can either leave it on the table or uh, you can fill it out and put it out on the information desk. Then we will collect it there. Your feedback is extremely important for us to, uh, to see what we can do to, to improve such a forum. Today has been much more engaging and interacting than, than what we have seen on, on, on previous editions. So thank you very much. On, on behalf of uh, all of Babington Europe and on behalf of, of the ones who have been uh, working on the forum. Thank you very much to all the presenters, especially to Michael for, uh, for your input. Very interesting to follow. And thank you very much to all of you members for uh, your interaction today. And don't miss the bus at six unless you're an extremely good swimmer. See you later. <laughs>